welcome back to the shop. Um, slight, I don't know what to say here. Um, you might be able to tell that uh, video got renamed. It's, we're not making a pocket door anymore. <laughs> uh, we went through the rough opening. We, so we're putting this into an existing opening. And there was a sliding glass door there uh, until yesterday. And so I pulled that door out to get a look at what our rough opening really looked like. And the, the sliding, the pocket door hardware showed up yesterday as well. Right. And looking through the instructions, they wanted an 86 and 3 quarter tall rough opening. I have an 83 inch tall rough, rough opening. And it's on the outside of the house, or what used to be the outside of the house. It's a fairly heavy duty task of restructuring the, the header, moving, trying to move the header up would have that's nah, just a can of worms I'm not going to deal with. And so we're changing this up a little bit. It's not going to be a pocket door, but otherwise it's still the same build. It's not really going to change. However, I do apologize to those of you waiting for me to start on a guitar because I'm also making the sliding hardware. Which, so I'm not going to be getting on a guitar for another couple of weeks. It's going to be a little while. It's probably going to be more like a month and a half, maybe two. Um, and other than that, we're going to get going. I'm going to get the hardboard flush trimmed onto this, and then we'll start resawing some cher cherry for the veneer on these. Um, and then we'll start gluing up the panels as well. So I'll bring you back when I'm ready to flush trim the hardboard to the maple, um, and we'll go from there. All right, so we've got them cut to rough length here. And uh, I'm just gonna take this board. This is my style, my potential style board. Um, and I've got some sapwood down on this end that I'm going to, you see the sapwood, can you? Yeah. So there's a good bit of heartwood right here. So I'm gonna lop off, I'm just gonna rip this down to rough width so that I get the best looking heartwood in the final boards, final pieces. And I can buy myself a little bit of filler strips where I wanna use it um, in some of the other areas. Uh, so I'm just gonna pick up the resaw, or pick up the saw, bandsaw. I'm just gonna rip this on the bandsaw real fast and we'll bring you back. set us up for a smidgen over an eighth of an inch here. Just, ooh, that's, a, that's more like 300 smidgens over. So we're gonna go, it's about, I'd say, 30 second over an eighth. Go a little tighter than that. It's still too loose. And truly, this thick thickness is not critical. It's going to be whatever it ends up at. I'm going to get the resaw. I'm going to get my resaw rig set up. In fact, I'm going to tell you about that here in a minute. And this is my resawing rig. Um, it's a little unusual. I've never seen anything like it. Um, there are some systems that are similar. Um, a lot of production shops put a small very slow stock feeder on uh, the bandsaw and it'll help it'll automatically feed the wood through that's a little more money than I was willing to spend and so I picked up a little bit of scrap steel and a little plywood and a couple of rollers and like the most critical thing with resong is keeping the keeping the distance that you're cutting as uniform as possible as an even feed and keeping it you know not wavy you don't want to have a curvy or wobbly or whatever. <clears throat> so 
what I've done, and I've seen other guys, they'll put feather boards down, which is great. Feather boards can work. Um, on taller stock, I find tipping, putting a feather board down low doesn't stop it from coming away from the fence up here. And I definitely, there are a million ways to resaw, first of all. This is how I do it, and this is how I get predictable, confident, repeatable results. If you get it a different way, do it that way. That's perfectly fine. The biggest thing about learning how to resaw is to pick a method, learn it, and do it well. Get predictable, repeatable, confident results. I love a flat fence. I don't like a pivot fence, a point fence. I refuse to acknowledge that bandsaw drift has to be compensated for. I take it out. There is no drift in my saw. I don't accept drift, and I won't angle my fence to compensate for it. I will make it flat. That way, when I put a new blade on and I make it flat, the fence doesn't have to move. Works great. Anyway, got a little ranty there. <laughs> so this is a pretty close to as instructive as I'm going to be about this. The, the method I use <clears throat> needs a lot of pressure here. Well, not a lot of pressure, but it likes pressure here. The better, the most pressure goes right in front of the blade so that right before the blade, it's contacting the fence beautifully. And on short boards, it's fine. I don't usually bring this thing out. On shorter boards that I can just do with my hand. I can just push the board through with my hands and I can hold it against the fence. But I'm going to do some 80 inch long boards. And I'm working alone. I have my wife. I could bring her out here, but that's, that never goes well. I have to pay for that. That's a labor cost. So what I do instead is this little mechanism. And there's a couple of casters. There's some straight rolling casters. And it's on a piano hinge here. There's a very sturdy piano hinge right here. I'll take some pictures so you can see that better. And that piano hinge is welded literally welded to a bit of angle iron that's upright and it can pivot so that it can push against and handle different stock thicknesses and stuff, things like that and that angle is on some other angle and this gets clamped to the table and there's a couple of hooks and a, and a bolt so the system mounts to the table mounts to the bandsaw table about like this and I move it so that the wheel contact is just ahead of the teeth and this usually works about right here and then I just clamp the little guy on gotta make sure I avoid the webs in the table the cast okay so now we've got it clamped here and let's see if I can reach around here haha <laughs> he said reach around And then this holds it really well to the table. <clears throat> I might one day just drill and tap the table for some bolts someday. But now we've got this so that the board, now all I'm going to do is have this pushing hard against the fence. And that's where the, the posts come from, the pegs. I put a bungee cord on it here. And that gives me a little bit, a little bit. I usually use two. Sometimes when I'm working with... Uh, really thick stock. I'll use three, but two is a lot. Down here, that'll, if you get your finger in there, that'll hurt. So there we have now my resawing setup. I'm going to go grab some cherry so we can, uh, we can watch this happen. Ready? Let's go resaw. All right, so now we're all set. We've got our cherry. I'm going to slice it this way. I've taken my little brass setup bar. It's an eighth inch thick. And it's, I can see light, it doesn't touch the tooth just yet. It's a little heavy eighth inch. It's a very light, heavy, very slightly heavy eighth inch. Um, and so the only thing we've got to do now is just push our board through. This will, this will get opened and then grab onto it and now it pushes everything down. I do notice I have to do a little more raising here. Okay. And so that's it. And then the name of the game is slow feed rate. Extremely slow feed rate. Take your time. Let me put a larger handle on that someday. Just let me open it. But that's covered uh, there. I'm going to need a push stick of sorts. This will do. All right. I'm going to gear up and try to slice this and see how many of these I can get out of one, one thickness. And then we'll go from there. Okay. 
Okay, that seemed to have gone pretty smoothly. Let's see how it looks here. Not too bad, it's a little fast, it looks like. This first part fed better than the last part. I was getting a little impatient. It's okay, those will sand out nicely enough. Okay, looks like eighth inch is gonna be viable. So let's, uh, let's do another one. All right, so I'm measuring this and I've got a distinct line where I sped up. When I started, I was at about 130, 130 thou, uh, 33 on the other side. So in eight inches, I was three thou thicker at the bottom. Then here we're at 130, here we're at 132, something like that, the top. So three or four thou variation top to bottom up to this point. Not, I don't know if you can see that shadow line, but there's a line that's a distinct one right there. You see that? Probably not very well, but there's a line right there, and that's kind of where I started to speed up. It's at 145 and 135 there. And then down here we got 155, 145. It just got thicker because I was moving so fast it was pushing the blade away from the fence. 165 here. So 150. So that's going to be a problem if I'm trying to conserve and get the most yield. So what I need to remember to do is just slow the heck down. Keeping it slow keeps it efficient and useful, uses the least amount of waste, the least amount of wood. <clears throat> and I lose as little, as little as possible. So I'm going to do these other two boards and then I'll address their surfaces. I'll probably run them all through the drum sander real fast. And then I'll run another line, another run, another run, another pass, and do the same. I'll just keep rinsing and repeating until I get four out of each of these. I don't need four out of this one, but I'm going to do it because I want the same thickness. So, and so that's what we'll do. We'll just give you some delightful music, maybe. Cutting did not get it as thin or as thick as I'd have liked it to not leave me as much as I'd have liked it to have left me. So we're going to go down to about a, a sixteenth a instead of an eighth, which is a lot of wood to lose, but I still, I've got enough, so it's fine. Um, and actually a sixteenth isn't going to be quite as visible on the edges, which I'm okay with as well, but it just means a hell of a lot of drum sanding. Drum sanding is boring, and it's rough. You stand, just stand the whole time, pointless standing. Well, anywho, we've got enough. This is the one I throw back. The rest of these are enough. So we've got all the ones we need for our styles and our rails. All right, that part veneer took a while, but all right, back in the shop. We've got to do the edgings of these things. So it's a little different for each one. On the center rail, we need a pair. We need enough on either side so that we can put the uh, profile on. Boy, that's a bad angle, isn't it? Erdogan. Brilliant. All right. Okay, so we've got the veneers done. We need to put some edging on each of the parts so that we have room for profiling the, 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 the inside of the frame. So the rails and styles get profiled and there's the top rail is going to get an arch that's about an inch and a half 
distance. It's going to be about an inch and a half. So what I want to do there, I think, is, I uh, hope that's big enough. It's just barely big enough. Um, so we'll probably do like an inch or an inch and a quarter uh, of an arch there. Um, the idea is I want to make sure that I don't hit sapwood anywhere because I don't like the look of the sapwood. Um, so that's, you know, what I'm going to work out now is I've got these pieces of skinny stuff and there's some of them are kind of long. Um, and I just need to work out enough to get a thick enough profile, thick enough coverage to make a profile on it. Um, I think for the styles, the ones that, the, the tall ones, I think I can do it with, with just this board alone, pretty sure, because three quarters of an inch ought to be enough, will, oh, not just ought, will be enough <laughs> to profile it. So I can get two bits that are three quarters of an inch out of this, I believe. What are we here? We're, we are about an inch and an eighth, inch and three sixteenths. Almost an inch and a quarter. It's a, it's a heavy three sixteenths. And so this is three over three. So we've got plenty of stock in this one. We've got plenty of stock in this one. And this I think we'll use for the uh, center because I only need three quarters on those. So I'm just going to get things cut roughly to shape to size and then you'll see what it is. And then I got to glue them on before I can veneer. So that is next. A little cutting first and then I'll bring you back.